Hi guys, this is the Forgetful Scholar. I'm Jessica. Welcome back. So this week, I basically went on an MM magical kick and I had a lot of fun doing it. So for the first book I'm going to talk about, let's see if I can get my Kindle to behave. Yeah, okay. So first book, I was just planning on reading the first in this series and then I ended up reading all three of them. That's how much I enjoyed it. So this one is the Magic in Manhattan series by Ali Thurin. Sorry if I mispronounce <laughs> any and all names because I will because that sorry. So the first book was Spellbound. So here it is. Now I, I gave it four stars and I really, really enjoyed it. Um whew, okay, so the books that I read. Um, this week are actually kind of new art. Oh, sorry, take the table. Our new releases, uh, pretty much, you know, within the last couple of years. So I don't want to give too much of the plot away. So I'm gonna try to explain the plot and why I liked it, and maybe some things I didn't like so much, without giving too much away because these these I actually ended up reading two series um, this week, and you should check them out. They were a lot of fun. So in Spellbound, we meet our heroes. Uh, one is Ace. He is from a well-to-do New York family. His father is a congressman. His brother is a New York alderman. And they're very wealthy and everything like that. And Ace is a World War I vet. And in this world, magic exists, but it's not well known. It's hidden. And Ace is normal, a human. Uh, and he realizes the paranormal paranormal exists because two of his friends in his unit have are paranormals and I really I thought it was really interesting how magic was handled um, in this world because it kind of reminded me of the X-Men you know how they're mutants so everybody has their unique power so no power is the same but in families some similarities exist like you could have a cousin who can control fire and you can create fire, but you can't control fire where they can, and they can't create fire where you can't, things like that. Or you could astral project, you know, and your mother can face through things, but can't astral project. So there's um, a bit of that going on, and I really enjoyed that. I thought that was a lot of fun. So Ace uh, finds out his comrades are paranormals because um, he was captured and they use their abilities to save him. So his two comrades are Philippe, Felipe, Ooh, Felipe, Felipe, Oof. Felipe, and he is a fire starter, and then Ellis, who can turn invisible. Now, with paranormals that could turn invisible or walk on the astral plane or things like that, other paranormals can see them, but non-casters cannot. Non-magical people cannot. So he's like, oh, okay. And Ace is lovely. Ace is wonderful. He's the classic hero, protective, good guy type. And he just accepts his friends with open arms, completely open hearted. And is like, oh, cool. What is this world? Let me learn. And after the war, they're in Paris for a while. And they meet Jade, who is so kick-ass. She's an um, African-American woman who is telekinesis and a spy. I would love to her story like she's so cool throughout all three of the books and Magic in Manhattan right now is a three book series I don't know if the author is planning to add to that but right now that's what it is and after I finished Spellbound I immediately went to the second one so that's how much I enjoyed it so they meet up they meet Jade and they meet Gwen who um, has witch sight so basically she could see humans auras auras and paranormal she doesn't because apparently paranormals don't have auras, but they have their magic. So she could see their magic and what it is and what they can do. Now, the bad guy throughout the whole three book series is Baron, um, I wrote it down. I, it wasn't easy for me to pronounce, still isn't. Uh, Zeppeler. I just, in my head, I just called him the Baron. He's a German paranormal who, a telepath and he's very power hungry. So that's kind of the setup for the, the bad guy over the three book series. So stuff happened and Jade, stuff happens to their friends and Jade and Ace come back to New York. 
they come back with a ring. So in this world, there are such things as relics and relics are supercharged, powerful items that powerful paranormals put their magic in to escape the Spanish Inquisition. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So uh, they, he has this ring and he doesn't know what it is. And he comes back to New York where there's this little antique shop in Hell's Kitchen that has like a hundred percent accuracy rating on like fakes and genuines. Okay, so we're gonna leave Ace there for a second. We're gonna talk about Rory, the second hero. Rory is adorable little feisty cinnamon bun and I love him. So, <laughs> so Rory's mother was uh, immigrated from Italy. His father was an American pastor that didn't marry her and pretended he didn't exist. So we hate him, he's horrible. Uh, <laughs> when Rory was 16, his mother passed away and he was sent to live at his father's orphanage. His father did not recognize him as his, but he stayed at the orphanage. It's, it's a pretty messed up situation. Now, Rory is what they call a subordinate paranormal and subordinate paranormals like Gwen are very, very powerful, but they don't, they don't have like an active control. So like Jade's telekinesis, she can put it at a target. Ellis, he can make himself invisible, things like that. So with um, Gwen and Rory's power, they're, they don't really have control, but they're a little bit more on the power scale than the others. So Rory, he's a scry, and when he touches something, he could see into its past, which is very cool. But the downside is he gets trapped there because he doesn't know how to use it. It's where paranormal powers are very hard to master. So when he's 16, he gets lost in the past after touching uh, a sniffer, a snifter, yeah, in the, in the church. And he's basically comatose and sent to an insane asylum. And in the book, it is called an asylum, um, which very scary, <laughs> like personally very scary, right? So at the asylum, his, he meet well, he doesn't meet because he's comatose, but there's a woman there who can see the future. She's paranormal too, and she's a subordinate as well, and she lost her mind to her power. She got, her magic overtook her, and she has no control, but she managed to uh, get Rory out. And her sister, Miss B, who owns the antique shop, visit her a lot, and the sister's like, I'm gonna die soon, but you and Rory, you need to stick together, because together you'll be okay. Everything will work out. So Miss B sneaks um, Rory out of the asylum, and takes him to Hell Kitchen and say, this is my nephew. So it's a bit of a found family and they're really sweet. It's really, really cute. Um, actually, it took me a while to where the story evolved that you're like, oh, they're not actually family. Oh, that's cute. Oh, you would never know. They're, it's very sweet. Found family. Adorable. Um, so he's the one that looks into the past of the, of the antiques that come in and he scries and he's very terrified of his powers because he doesn't want to lose his mind again, which is... Yeah, like who would, right? So that, so Ace sends the ring to Miss B and he's like, don't open it until we could talk because he got pulled away from another one of their friends and I'm gonna mispronounce the name, I'm sorry. I typed it into Google, you know, translate to try to hear how it's talked, but uh, spoken, not talked, spoken. Um, but I'm not very good at Mandarin Cantonese pronunciation. So he is uh, Zhang, 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 Zhang? And he, his family are basically relic hunters. So they take um, things like the ring or anything like that that could hurt paranormal and humans and they hide it away and they guard them. He can astral project while his body is like going to work or, you know, talking to Ace and he can astral project his spirit somewhere else to do cool spy stuff. He's very cool too. <laughs> and Jade runs a speakeasy, which is all just, how cool can she be? Like, she's just the cool. She wears men's suits all the time. She smokes cigars. She's just the coolest. Ah, okay. So, back on track. Yes, come on, Jessica, back on track. Okay. So, Ace gives the ring to Miss B to be appraised, and he's like, don't look into it until we could talk, because uh, there's some stuff I have to tell you before you touch it, because he, he understands subordinate paranormal abilities, and he doesn't want her to get lost in the past, and he's not sure what the ring will do to her, because they're not sure what the ring does. That being said, Rory gets a little curious and um, impulsive, and he is 20, and he's written like a 20-year-old, a 20-year-old that's been through some stuff, so a little mature, but still, there's an impulsiveness, there's a temper. I enjoy it. It feels real. He goes and touches the ring. 
he gets furious because he's afraid. So he, when he gets afraid, he gets angry. He calls up Ace and tells him to, you know, shove it. Ace comes down because he thinks Miss B is in a coma because she touched the ring. And that's when they meet. So Ace sees Rory and he's annoyed and thinks he's adorable. Ace see, uh, Rory sees Ace and he is scared and angry and also thinks Ace is the most handsome man he's ever seen. So that's when they meet. <laughs> and together they go on this adventure to discover this relic and save Coney Island and New York basically. Again, I don't want to give too much away because it is a really fun read. The only reason I gave, the, literally the only reason I gave these books four stars is because it's listed as a historical romance, but the love scenes are fades black. And I'm like, ah, oh, come on, you know, you set the table. It's like setting the table and not making food. Like it's, we're not watching Hallmark here. We, you know, you know, we want all steam, you know? Uh, I'm not sure if that's just how this because I, I think I stumbled on a subgenre, so I'm not sure if this is how, you know, MMs in the 1920s are just all fates alike. I'm not sure. Um, but that's the only reason these books are uh, four star to me. I've already, like, told four or five people about these books, recommended them already, because I really had a fun time. And you just really fall in love with the couple of Ace and Rory. They are so sweet. And you root for them so hard. And I like their dynamic dynamic together everything you know so that is spellbound the next book in the series is star crossed Let's see if you can see it yeah see it okay star crossed so this one um starts off uh so they are at i have to remember trying to remember the ace's older brother's name i guess it doesn't really matter he has a lot of siblings they're at his estate up in upstate new york with another um, sibling paranormals that needed to get out of town because of the Baron. And Rory's basically helping with uh, Ace's five nieces and nephews and staying away from the older brother. And he like hides away, you know, and at night he scries the stuff that the older brother wants to praise, tells Miss B and then hides away. And the brother doesn't have a very good opinion of him because every time he comes to his room, you know, Rory just runs away. He doesn't talk to him, nothing. And Ace is getting a little like, no, Rory's the best. Rory's, you know, the bravest and the most awesome. You have no idea. Don't say that about him. You know. And the second book, what stuck out to me is that they, the author really showed, like, Ace started to realize how different their class, like, financial class was. You know, Ace is in the guest room. Rory is down in the basement. Servant quarters, things like that. And there was one scene when Ace is at a fundraiser for his older um, assemblyman's brother's fundraiser and he's surrounded by his peer group, his family, and you really, like the author did a really great job of just making me feel his claustrophobia, his isolation, his alienation from his family because they don't know really anything about him. They don't know about the paranormal. They don't know that he's gay, they don't know how important Rory is because Rory's the love of his life. Like, they have no idea. Um, and in this book, Ace's ex, Wes, I had to remember his name, <laughs> Wes, Lord Fine, who is an English lord, uh, is in this book and really just brings out the insecurities in both Rory and Ace and their relationship. And in this one, another relic is found and it's really bad news. You know, like, they open it and people vomit and it's it's horrible. It's really, it's so bad that when Rory looks back into its past, he would rather die. He would rather let Ace be tortured and die, the man he loves more than anything, before he tells the bad guys how to use this. So that's how bad it is. Um, there is a couple that showed up in the last book, that shows up in this book, that like, I... I hate them, I love them, I hate them, I love them, I hate them, I love them. And you go through that with all three books. You don't know if you like them or not. You want to, you hate them. They're so good at being bad and they're good. And then it's all this craziness. All this craziness happens. Uh, we do run into a paranormal that nickname is Mr. Hyde because he could shapeshift from, you know, his normal human self uh, to his monster self. And apparently in the war, when Ace was kidnapped and tortured, he thought they would give him hallucinogens and he imagined this monster. No. 
this monster was Hyde and he tortured him and Ace didn't break under torture because Ace is amazing. Um, <laughs> so the Baron punished Hyde by, for, by keeping him in only his monster state because uh, Baron has his own relic. So again, this is like the Baron is pulling strings and everything is dangerous. Rory almost drowns like twice. He doesn't know how to swim. Um, their connection between the two gets deeper. You know, you s there's a little bit of like Ace wanting to take Rory to Paris where they could be a little bit more open and be a little more together and things like that. Uh, there's, there's development on all sides and it's really, really sweet. Um, I, and there's like a lot of action packed. At one point in the middle of the book, something happened that I just could not put it down. I had to finish it. It had to be finished that night. I could not put it down. I wanted to know what happened. So there's a lot of good suspense there. And as soon as I was done with that, I immediately went to, well, the next morning, because already it was like three o'clock in the morning. So I was like, all right, okay. The next morning I went to the third and I believe the final book in the series, uh, Wanderstruck, at least for this couple. I'm not sure if there's going to be um, another one. I did see that the author is going to put out a one shot with Wesley and a henchman turned ally or an ally turned henchman turned ally actually um for the next one I'm like mm, I, I think I'm gonna I want to read that I want to I want to see that I didn't much like Wesley as the you know ex coming in type but it might be interesting to see his point of view with things so um and I really like this where again the only thing I didn't like was the fates black everything else really really loved I thought the people were the couples were really realistic and you know the issues were sound and the reason why the conflicts happened made sense like it, it was good so uh wander struck they're still trying to destroy this really bad relic relic so they're traveling all over to try to figure out now the ally turned henchman turned ally he says well, my family's been uh, guarding these relics forever they got what was keeping the relics hidden got stolen and now i'm bound in basic basic um slavery to the baron but i don't want to be the baron has an, uh, an ally that once he takes his blood he can control you against your will mm, yeah so again the couple that you know you hate you like you hate you like shows up and you're like okay okay so a lot of stuff, okay, they're back. What's going to happen? Are we going to trust them? Are we not going to trust them? What's going to happen? So there's a lot going on. Um, Worry and Ace, you know, and, and it's funny to realize that in the book chronology, they've only been together maybe two months, maybe three months, but they're so deeply in love and they're so cute. Like really. Uh, so they're in Europe and they're trying to stop Baron the Baron from doing all these things. They're trying to find the siphon to stop the relics. And again, I don't want to give too much away, but it was very, it was, act, it was action packed. Like I, I, I enjoyed it. I wanted to finish reading it. I didn't want to put it down till I was done. It was very interesting. And I like the ending. I like what happens. I like all of it. What happens? I know that doesn't <laughs> Like, oh, I like to go read it. It doesn't really give you much, but I don't want to spoil anything either. I will say, you know, the whole thing was four stars just because the fate's black. If they had actual, you know, steaminess, five stars across the board. I've already told like five people about it and like, you should read it. This was so much fun. Because honestly, if you want to fall in love with a character, like a couple, you will fall in love with Ace and Rory. They're just... Oh, they're just sweet little beans and I want them to live happily ever after and I'm when I was reading it, I was trying to pretend really hard that World War II didn't start in like in Europe in 1938 like yeah yeah you'll be safe in Paris the war's not gonna start soon you'll be fine <laughs> you know so that's a really good series I believe um both of the writers I read today are indie writers so you know show them some love go help them out they were great the second series is, I just read the first two books in the series because I don't, that hasn't been completed yet. Uh, and it was, the first one was The Engineer, Steam, Magic and Steam, book one. The light's hitting it in a weird way. Sorry. Okay. So this was a steampunk um, 
romance, steampunk um, MM romance, and because I just, I, I was like, oh, I want some good steampunk. And a lot of times steampunk is really overloaded with a lot of tropes and the steam gadgety part of it's kind of secondary. I did enjoy this one because it seemed a little bit more clean cut. It is an MM and it takes place in 1881. And it's just basically steampunk technology and magic. So it's a little bit more streamlined. Like there's not werewolves and vampires and everything, which is fun, but sometimes it kind of overloads uh, a book. And then the steampunk aspect of it is just pushed to the back. So our hero, Gillian, and we're, all, and we're always in his perspective, which I usually is a pet peeve of mine. Um, but something about this writing, I did not mind. I did not mind so much that she has another series that I pretty much download all four of those books and like pre-ordered the fifth one in that series. That's how much I enjoyed this. So Gillian is basically, uh, he's a caster, a magical caster, and he works for basically the magic steampunk version of the FBI. And usually casters are assigned with what they call bruisers, like non-magic wielding fighters to balance it out because in this world casters can't really touch each other without their magic kind of causing pain for either of them. He's sent to Arizona on the trail of the Tinker and the Tinker is this mad scientist who's creating these monstrosity monsters and like steampunk weapons and bombed Boston so he's on the most wanted list right now and they sent their best Gillian after him. And Gillian's kind of a smaller guy kind of unassuming you don't think he's like the badass that he is, but he's, he's a badass. He's pretty cool. And uh, like when he's in Arizona, he runs into another most wanted uh, vigilante on their list, Gunner the Deadly. And Gunner is a quick draw. He's a dead shot. Like he's the, the, the tall, handsome, silent cowboy type that we all see, we all love, even if we pretend we don't. Come on now. So there's instantly an attraction in this world, you know, being gay is still very dangerous um, for their safety. So there's instant attraction and Gillian has been hiding that part of like suppressing that part of himself for a good 10 years. And we do see indications that Gillian has a lot of secrets, like a lot of demons in his closet and things like that, which I think will pay off later because there's a lot of breadcrumbs leading up to it. So it, I think it's going to be really cool. Uh, again, I don't want to give too much away. Um, the Tinker is from Gunner's past. Um, so there's a little hint that Gunner might be more involved in this than he, even he originally thinks. So they do team up temporarily to stop the Tinker and the attraction and the relationship between the two grows because Gillian realizes, oh, Gunner's actually a really good person and He's a vigilante for a reason. Like, he never went or hurt innocent people. He always went after, like, gangsters, things like that. So, but also Gillian knows that, like, if someone finds out, they're both, like, 100% in trouble, you know? So, so stuff happens. And there's pretty steamy parts that happen. Um, at the end, it's left open-ended. Um, Gunner... And him kind of make a date like, okay, Gunner's like, I'll meet you in New York for New Year's. Which is really dangerous for Gunner because that's the headquarters of the magical FBI. And the boss there is very uncorruptible, like a, a lawman that Gunner actually respects. So it's pretty dangerous, but Gunner's willing to risk it, which is really sweet. The next book, and I was like, oh my god, that's it? No, that can't be it. That can't be it. And then I saw the next book is The Gangster. I think that's a little bit better, right? I'm completely sure, but that's okay. The book needs to be the star. So the gangster picks up, uh, it's basically the first scene we see Gillian being a badass. He's chasing this uh, Jimmy the Strangler, I think his name is, and he basically has been strangling cops, like good cops. So Gillian sent after him, he's a badass, everything. We find out that that's basically New Year's Eve, and Gunner should be arriving soon. There is a part, excuse me. <laughs> so there is a part where Gillian's boss, who's been his supervisor for 10 years, gives him a very personal gift, and in Gillian's mind, again, we're in Gillian's head only, 
he's kind of like, wait, is he hitting on me? Is he not? Because Killian is really socially awkward. He really is. And he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know. He doesn't realize if the boss is hitting on her or not. And I was like, when I was reading, I was like, he better not be. It's been 10 years. Are you kidding me? That's bullshit. You got Gunner now. You don't need him. Because mm. I really, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, he realizes it's New Year's Eve. He runs to meet Gunner. He thinks he misses him. He doesn't. It's wonderful. They go back to his boarding house. Someone sent a, uh, well, someone sent a uh, steampunk monstrosity, like a, like a steampunk robot monster after to kill Gilliam and it's the new gangster in, in the city called TikTok. No one's seen what he looks like and things like that and basically Gillian is a target. Again we get hints of Gunnar's background that he might be a little bit more connected to what's going on than he realizes and Gillian you know he has a lot of secrets that we're starting to unravel. I don't want to spoil anything about the mystery I was very satisfied when you find out who TikTok is you're like oh, of course the clues were there the whole time because a lot of times I, I see that you know oh the big reveal and you're like wait a minute there was no clue to that or oh yeah that was broadcasted way before yeah I totally got that so that was fun I was like oh oh cool fun all right and that leaves off um you know, I'm not going to say anything else. It kind of also leaves off on a big cliffhanger. And uh, apparently the new book that's going to come out is called The Doctor. I don't, I haven't seen a release date for it yet, but I really want to read it. Like I'm looking forward to it. So the engineer and the gangster both got four stars. And the only reason they got four stars is, um, sorry. <laughs> so the only reason they got four stars is because it was only in Gillian's head. And that's just a pet peeve of mine. That's all. That's really it. So this week was amazing. I had a lot of fun with the MM magic side of things. Um, I hope you guys did <laughs> had fun watching. I don't know. So I don't want to, but it's time for me to get back to the real world. So I'll see you later. Bye.